G'day fellas and welcome to Nomad. This is an Age of Empires 4 video. Well, I probably should mention, hey, this is a casted game. A casted game. We are on Nomad right now and we are watching players as they try and make their way towards their home. You've got some players who look to walk across the entire map, like Recon here, who is going to aim to build his town center on this side of the map. He's got a nice little forest here, but who does he have nearby? Well, it doesn't look like Snooper is gonna be nearby because Snooper has decided to build his town center a little bit further away over on this side. And of course, we are on Mega Random. That is right, Mega Random. It is the name of the game. It is the name of the map. Anybody who knows anything about Mega Random, uh, you will understand that this map can be quite literally random at any damn time. That is correct. At any damn time, uh, meaning that uh, you just get absolutely wild maps that spawn. So you can see Snoop is going to be making his way. He's on the Chinese up here. Let's introduce the rest of our players, though, because we have got spawning in in the middle of the map. <laughs> We've got Beastie Cutie, who is on the orange as the Holy Roman Empire. And you can see he's making his way back. He's actually just decided to leave this villager here. And instead of bringing everybody uh, towards this one position, Beastie, this is, a, this is a smart move. I kind of like this. Typically in Nomad, you'll see players just go for like... Uh, t players will look to bring back all their villagers to one spot, but Beastie's going for a little bit of an interesting play here. I think it's kind of dangerous considering this is literally an eight-player free-for-all with Nomad right now. Uh, but it is going to be absolutely disgusting, I suspect. But uh, let's take a look now down towards the east of the map. Or the Look at this, Nevix sitting in the corner. He's got two villagers tapping away at the, the town center. Third one coming in. I tell you what, if I've ever seen a spawn... That is like, th this is fucking, th like, we we have got the perfect corner spawn right here. Nevix going to be very happy. Th this guy, I'm, I'm putting my money on Nevix to win just because of how good his spawn is. But uh, he's going to be playing the English here as well. Good late game civilization. And that's typically where we are going to be going. And now over on the the other side of the map, did we, no, this is Dinky King. So we've got Dinky King who's doing a little bit of shore fishing. I love it. I got to say, I love this Dinky King. Very smart. He's got a great little spawn here. Look at this. He's got his wood line. He's got his shore fish here to provide him the food. He's got the gold right next to it. Not too bad. Not too bad. But he scouted out an enemy already. That's Kayo. Uh, but that, what? Salami. Sal salami with the lost villager. Look at Salami. <laughs> oh, poor Salami, dude. This is going to be coming up as an idle villager the entire game. He's probably just got it patrolling back and forth just to stop it from going idle. I wouldn't be surprised, but hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. We got a new contender for the best, the best base, the best corner position. It is going to be Salami, right? That looks, that's actually a better position. Um, than, than Nevix. So I'll give you guys a little tip. The reason why corners are so strong in free-for-alls is because it's very easy to wall your landmark town center. That's why. And that's what you're going to be looking to do. So to, to avoid snipes, what Nevix wants to do is he wants to wall this in. He wants to stonewall in his town center. So the further he can get this to the back, the better. Because ideally what you're going to be looking to do is get like your, your town center and then just stonewall it in. Uh, but interestingly, um, let's have a look at Nevix's position because Beastie's actually eating his berries. Um, interesting strategy, Beastie. Eating the berries of Nevix. I mean, to be fair, though, it is he is playing the English, so it's always a little bit dangerous. But where were we at? We were at Salami. So Salami spawns up in the north, playing as the English as well. So we've got quite a few English players. Now, I do believe this was a random game. So even though we're playing on Mega Random, every player went for random civilizations. And keep in mind, the aim of the game is to win. Where is our next player spawning? They are spawning over here. So Kayo spawning as the French, uh, going for an early farm. I, I don't know how I feel about this, Kayo. This is kind of, this is difficult, mate. You've found some sheep, though, so um, that's it's better than nothing. But over on the, I don't even, uh, you know what? I think we started off, we were looking at Kor uh, and his villagers, but we never even introduced him. So down towards the south, we've got Kor who spawns in. Is Kor the most isolated of all the players? Oh, <laughs> Look at this, dude. Oh, the, the classic, the classic mega random nomad spawns. Literally on the same screen, these two. This is where all the action is going to be. And this is tough, right? Because what does Recon want to do in this situation? Because Recon is, is playing as the, the deli here. Uh, he wants to wall off. So does he know? I think he knows. I think he knows that... Yeah, he, he would only know now because this is where his villager started off. And the villager made the trek all the way across the map and then would have scouted that. So he's probably shitting himself right now. Um, so, 
yeah, that's a little bit, a, a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy. Um, so. Uh, typically in this situation, what Recon would want to do, he would want to wall himself off and just make it so that no one can really attack him. But the problem is he's kind of pushed into the corner uh, and he doesn't have a lot of resources behind. He's got a single gold to be working with. I guess he could always look to be doing trade on the water as well. He's got access to that. He knows about the water, I'm pretty sure. Indeed he does. He doesn't know how big it is. Um, but yeah, trade is always a viable option for him in this scenario. Uh, but uh, I suspect all of our action is going to be over here to start with. These guys are very close to each other. Uh, and I guess the next question for you guys at home. Would you like to see a Nomad game mode? Would you like to see Nomad added to Age of Empires 4 officially supported? Because this is Nomad uh, that works very functionally with mods. Uh, but would you like to see an option in Age of Empires 4? Because in Age of Empires 2 right now, uh, players are very easily able to do Nomad. In fact, Nomad actually... Uh, is he pushing his deer in? What a nice guy. He pushed his deer to the mill. What a nice guy. Look at that. Look at Kaio being so nice. I do we have a Rus in this game, actually? Let's have a look. I don't think there's a Rus in this game. No, there's no Rus players in this game. But he was... <laughs> Look at him, he's hurting for him. What a, what a nice guy, dude. What a nice guy. You know the you know he's like trying to buy early favor because a lot of this a lot of this is like when it comes to free for alls, it's very much alliances. It's like, hey, you, you know, you're communicating to each other and you're saying, hey, I'm not going to attack you. Let's attack this guy together. So you can see like Kaio was buying some early favor. He's like, all right, I know Snooper is nearby to me. Like if we take a look from Kaio's perspective right now, hold on. Okay, give me a sec. Sorry. There we go. All right. If we look at Kaio's perspective, he knows. He doesn't know. Oh, I think he might know about this town center. So he knows that his enemy is close. And so he's like, you know, like, hey, bro, do you mind? Like, come on, we can help each other out here. We can take these guys out. That sort of thing. Like, you know, friendly alliance stuff. That's that's the, that's the kind of the thought process that's going on in here. But now Snooper looking to age up. Just a Barbican of the Sun on the deer herd. Very nice opening for Snooper as well. He's got, oh my God, what a beautiful opening for Snooper. Speaking of big opening, let's get that open. Uh, let's get that closed rather. But would, yeah, I guess my question is, would you guys like to see it officially supported? Because in Age of Empires 2 right now, you can go into ladder and there are literally maps that you spawn in on and it's Nomad. So you don't start off with a town center. I'm talking like ranked ladder, like Viper, uh, all of the Age of Empires 2 players. I'm trying to think of all the other Age of Empires 2 players, like, uh, you know, like uh, Viper, Hera, uh, Leary. All of these big guys, they can go right now, you know, playing Age of Empires 2. I mean, you guys at home could probably do the same thing. Uh, but I, I remember watching their stream and they would like queue up and it's, oh, it's Nomad. Okay, like I will do this. And some maps have a Nomad default uh, configuration. So as an example, like you wouldn't just get Nomad Dry Arabia. It would be like, oh, this map here specifically, it is a Nomad map like that. So there's a big element of RNG to it. But at the same time, there's an element of, of, uh, of decision making as well. But I would be very curious to see it uh, added into at least like the quick match. I think that's I think quick match is a really good place in Age of Empires 4 um, to sort of uh, begin experimenting with the way that the game can be played. But that's on the condition that they actually look at look at this look at this Snooper helping out over here. He's like, hey mate, yeah, I got some deer for you, buddy. He's buying early favor. Um, but yeah, I, I think the the big thing for quick match is take away the dodge function, but then look to try and test things out. Because people typically will, you know, they will dodge things they don't want to play. So if you've got, like, you know, people just dodging around the clock nomads, well, then people don't want to play nomad, you know, like, get it out of there. But if people are looking forward to it and they're always coming in, then by all means, do it. So we've got a couple of age ups coming through. We've got core, we got recon. So core down towards the south, he's gone with the school of cavalry. No surprises there. He's very safely and snugly put into this corner. Uh, over on the other corner. We've got Nevix. He's doing his thing. Look at that. Farms coming out the wazoo. Still yet to get rid of that sheep carcass. He's about to do it now. Oh, he's going off the other carcass. I was looking at him like, is this sheep? Is it, is it bugged? Is that what's happening? No, he's going off the other carcass. On the uh, In the other corner, we got Salami. Salami about to age up to the next age, doing the same thing. These English players, they are looking to take the corners of the map. Where are our other English players? I think we've got one over here. Yeah, oh, a little bit of action in the early game. I apologize for missing this one. Dinky King, uh, definitely not intending to remain neutral. Looking to try and put the herd on. Looking to try and take out Recon early, but does he... Oh, he's got a little bit of problems up towards the north. Kaio, uh, you know, earlier we saw Kaio look to gain favor with Snooper, 
But now all of a sudden, Kaio has said, well, I'm going to tower rush you. Uh, so Kaio coming in with a little bit of an outpost uh, on the gold mine. Very, very nice. Nice and early. And we see a second outpost going to be coming up for Kaio as well. But at the same time, at the same time, He's got other problems, and that that is uh, that is Recon on his south flank. Uh, now, Recon actually begins taking advantage of the water. He's on the deep fish already. Doesn't actually spot any other deep fish. We'll take a look at the spawn. It's not terrible. There are plenty of deep fish out here, but it isn't going to be the most efficient food processing or the food farming that you can do. But now we can see that... So these outposts coming up, they're definitely going to help Recon in this situation, but those longbows, they're coming around the back of the base, and it, it seems that Dinky King believes that we, he is part of a... Uh, part of a, a 1v1 and he's looked to find his opponent and indeed find his op opponent he has so we can see the walls have begun to come up for recon uh just walling up down towards this position but uh yeah it uh it seems to be going quite well a little bit of an interesting house i guess he started off with this house villager moving up i think the villagers just scouting out for potential walls maybe he's looking for a bit of a peak potentially i'm not sure exactly what's going on there but we'll tune in with our other players we've got snooper who's continuing to do well uh, just, just doing his own thing. I mean, really, at this point, Snooper double TC song dynasty boom. Snooper is the absolute biggest boomer you've ever seen. Where are those longbows at? Those longbows just chilling out. Probably gonna try and take out that house. Who we got next? We got Beastie Cutie up next. Beastie Cutie already on the way to the castle age. So he means business, manages to keep the villager alive. A little bit of action over towards this position. You can see the horsemen going to be coming out. Villagers, got to be careful here. They're losing life to the longbow. Let's check back in over on with his opponent. You can see the longbow's routing around. Not going to be looking to engage, but the, the tower rush continues uh, to come in upon Dinky King. But now Beastie might be in a little bit of a, a, a worry as uh, he loses another villager now. Man at Arms coming out, but uh, yeah, managing to get up the main town center as well as the Regnitz Cathedral now. Beautiful little spot that he's got here for his Arkham Chapel. My main concern right now for Beastie is he's somewhat in the middle of the map, and he's got an English player to his east. He's got core to his south and i'll be honest with you guys you never want to have core to your south uh that is never a fun time but now beastie gonna be evacuating the dance floor he's got the arkham chapel here uh ready to do work but i suspect we're gonna have some knights coming out shortly indeed we already do one upon the way uh gonna be looking to clean this up so very nice opening here from beastie uh managing to get up to the castle agent he's gonna be grabbing all the relics you can see him heading out on the map first relic here second relic up towards the north so he'll be securing those up and keep in mind he's gonna be able to keep those additional relics in things like his outposts and his keeps, all those nice little uh, defensive structures. Uh, but at the same time, we'll check in with his opponent and see how Nevix is doing, because Nevix is definitely intent on booming up hard. Uh, and I, I, I gotta say, I really like Nevix's position here, the fact that this is open. Uh, you could put a wonder up here very easily. And I think a lot of, when it comes to free-for-all games like this, I think a wonder is a great way of forcing uh, your enemy to come and attack you. So, from Nevix's perspective, if he puts a wonder here, and I would I would honestly argue, like, put a fucking, put your king's palace right next to it, leave space for the wonder, and then put the king's palace next to it, wall them both in, so you've got two landmarks behind stone walls. Oof, baby, oof. Uh, but Man at Arms gonna be idling up any villagers on that gold mine. Nice little opening here. Uh, let's check back in on the other side and just make sure that we're not missing any action. It doesn't seem like it at this point. A little bit of a horseman mass beginning, starting to move over onto, uh, starting to move over onto farms as well. Recon is, uh, but then up towards the north, uh, we hear, oh, we hear quite a battle beginning to unfold. We got Kaio who's coming in with both scouts as well as knights, uh, doing a great job of just forcing his enemy out. It looks like uh, Dinky King going to be able to to solidify his position here with the battering ram, but at the same time, he's going to be under pressure. Uh, we'll check in with Dinky King and see how he's doing uh, because now we've got uh, we've got it coming through. He hasn't really spotted much of the map out. You can see he's moved down to this wood line down to the south. He's fearful of any villagers being down here, but Dinky King going to have this age up coming through. You know, he'd love to do the King's Palace, but I feel like at this position, there's just so much pressure coming in. Maybe it's a good idea not going for the King's Palace. No, he's going to go for the King's Palace. So Dinky King in a very difficult spot here. Honestly, if I'm Dinky King... All I want to do is kill Recon and take his position. And then, you know, at least I've got my back to the wall then in, in, in some kind of way. Because that's the big thing. When it comes to, you know, when it comes to these free-for-all games, it is very much about making sure you've got your, your back to the wall. I would love to be like Beastie and sit in the middle and build this beautiful castle, you know, just filled with, with stone walls and outposts and, and keeps everywhere. But the reality is there's so many angles you can be attacked from. It's just not going to happen. 
King's Palace now going down for Salami. He is looking to get up to the Castle Age himself. He's gone for three Town Centers here as well. So two TCs to open with, and then the third Town Center going to be the King's Palace. And he's got a great little spot up here towards the north. Take a look at this. Absolutely beautiful. And and this is what I was talking about early with Nevix's base. So for Salami, you'd, just, you'd want to put the one dart down right here and then just stonewall in this corner. And it will be awesome. You can see he's building uh, infrastructure here at the moment. Probably going to have to get deleted if he intends to do that. But uh, we'll check in with the other players and see how they're doing. Kayo on the other side. Going for 2TC himself. So there seems to be a lot of booming going on in uh, in this uh, mega random nomad scenario. And honestly, watching this, it makes me want to play it. I really want to play it. Third TC coming down for Kayo. He means business. Uh, let's check in. Oh, my Lord. Look at what we have down here. We've got Core being the sneakiest I've ever seen. Going up to age three. And look at this. Guildhall in the corner. Core knows how to free for all. Core knows how to free for all. This is exactly it, baby. So what does Core want to do in this scenario? Core wants to wall like a madman. Now, the, the difficult thing is he's got quite a shoreline here that he's going to have to defend. And that's going to hurt him out a fair bit. But he does have a great little opening uh, in, in the fact that he's got the first town center and the second town center down. And you, you just don't, you don't, be, don't be bogged down by this first town center. This is your new base core. This is your new home. Uh, so, you know, I look forward to you putting a wonder down here, stonewalling in everything uh and then defending against i mean like look at this when you think about it from core's perspective he is literally in the corner there is nobody even nearby and you can see he's starting to stone wall right now very smart moves from core i would I, honestly i would be putting this bad boy onto stone we are going to the moon i would like i would put it up to like ten thousand stone and then i would literally stone wall everything i would just be non-stop stone walling everything it is so lame but he's so far away from everybody it just makes sense to do Let's take a look at our next player. Who's that? We've got over here. It's going to be Recon again. We've rounded back around the corner to the Recon. Uh, he's going to be dropping down that second town center, and he is expanding out towards the backside. Uh, so we'll take a look over at his neighbor. Actually, here is his neighbor, Snooper. Uh, not so much his neighbor. Jeez, look at Snooper, dude. Dude, Snooper is going ham. Is anybody going to stop Snooper? Uh, Snooper has got line of sight in all directions right now. He's got outposts out the wazoo. How many outposts does he have? Let's take a look. Let's see. Villagers should be able to tell us. Seven outposts so far. He is just getting all of the line of sight. But now he's under siege towards the north. Uh, but uh, we'll take a look over at uh, at how Dinky King is doing. I'll, I'll switch it into his perspective because that's going to be my concern. Dinky King is really in a difficult position. Uh, so he is stuck between two players. He's obviously got Recon to his west. And to his north, he's got the French player, Kaio. Uh, and Kayo is going to continue to apply pressure throughout the game because he needs space to expand. Recon, he's got all the space that he needs to expand behind this. So he's very happy just sitting here. He's very happy chilling. But if there's going to be somebody that is killing, it's probably going to be it's probably going to be Dinky King. Uh, but we'll, we'll take a look at Recon's perspective. We'll see what he's up to because there is a little bit of a, a push coming through. He's now beginning to add in a few more elephants here. And I like the way that he's, he's moving into this. Kayo coming through for a raid, trying to find it. Uh, but uh, at the same time, a nice boom coming in for Recon. Uh, my main concern is going to be Dinky King, though. Dinky King definitely looks like he is in positioning, well, in the position to be the first one to bow out of this game if there is ever going to be a person bowing out, which I would suspect there is because this is a free-for-all and that's the way that the game works. Um, and keep in mind, he's got, like, he is completely open from the south side. To be honest, I wouldn't I wouldn't actually hate if Dinky King began to migrate down towards this position. That wouldn't be terrible for him. I mean, how much... He doesn't actually know anything about the map, though. And I think that's the consequence of, you know, having people that spawn close to you. Is he is so worried about his neighbors that are right next to him. He doesn't even know what's going on on the rest of the map. He doesn't know, you know, where his enemies are. And look at Kaio just being so annoying here. We'll change over to Kaio. We'll see... It, uh, oh, that's the wrong player. There we go. So we'll change over to Kayo. And you can see Kayo just following around Dinky King. He's actually going to lose a villager here if he's not paying attention. Indeed he does. Villager is going to go down. Uh, so Kayo doing a great job. But Kayo right now sitting on a huge amount of villagers. 87 villagers. Triple TC French. That is almost unrivaled villager numbers. And you can see he's got the guild hall sitting up safe towards the top of the... Uh, or towards the back of the map. And that's exactly how you want to do it. I got to say, I love the way Kayo is playing this. Such a smart move. Uh, but we'll take a look now over at Core. See how Core is doing. Uh, Core gonna be just doing his thing. Oh my lord, Core is moving out with hulks. Core is beginning to, to head out upon the open ocean. The, uh, the stone walls are beginning to make their way through. Has he put this over to stone? He hasn't put it over to stone. Core making a bit of an amateur error. And I like this from Core. I like this from Core though. These are some good walls coming up for him. 
Let's take a look over at Nevix. Nevix is on the east side of the map, and we can see the core now actually putting an outpost down. He is looking to explore the map. Unfortunately, going to be get getting met with a couple of sp or a spear and a couple of swords by the looks of it. And we've got a nice little. What? Beastie Cutie, what are you up to, my friend? Beastie Cutie just going absolutely ham. Beastie Cutie going to Imperial right now. Everybody is in age three. Beastie's going age four, obviously playing the Holy Roman Empire here. It's going to be something that he wants to do. He wants to get to age four as quickly as possible, but you can hear those relics being picked up by the man. He is going absolutely crazy. Despite his position... I, I do like the fact that he's playing Holy Roman Empire in Free For All. I do feel like it's a very strong Civ. Now, obviously, this is mega random random, which means that you spawn in as a random Civ. You don't get to pick your Civ. I feel like if if I, what, if I was going to do a Free For All tier list, I, I feel like Holy Roman Empire would be pretty close to the top just because you've got this, this gold ro rolling in for the entirety of the game. And, like, as an example, let's look at the French player. Um, it is Kayo. Have a look on the map where the trading posts are. How viable do you think it is to actually trade? If, if you know that the, all three of the trading posts are down here and cause literally stonewalling them in, the other trading post up towards this position, which is right outside Beastie Cutie's base, probably going to get walled in as well. It's not viable to trade. And as a result, it means your gold in the late game is always going to be a struggle. Uh, so I feel like maybe maybe that is, uh, that's actually a pretty potent civilization, a pretty strong civilization. So we'll have to look to see how he plays it. You can see he's got so many relics, he doesn't even know where to put them. Probably just going to be finding outposts to stick them into. But, uh, yeah, you can see he's got so much line of sight up out here. Let's take a look and see how many he's got. He's got, uh, five outposts already. Let's tune in with Dinky King, though. I want to see what he's up to. Oh, God, Dinky King. Oh, God. Immediate- Oh, God, Dinky King. Oh, God, Dinky- Is he even ca- Oh, oh, I see. There's a couple of men at arms coming in. Nice little defensive wall a lot. And interestingly, I like the way that it exposes that on everybody's map. So now everyone is able to see that a wall went down over here. But a huge battle beginning to unfold now up towards this north. Salami going to be looking to take on Snooper at the same time uh, down towards the south. We've got ourselves a little bit of a, a, a fight on water. Uh, so as a result, it means that Core are going to be struggling here. Recon beginning to focus all of his attention towards that direction. We see the stone walls beginning to, to come up here as well. And... Uh, He's really looking to defend uh, at, at this point. There, there is just... I mean, there's a huge amount of, of opportunity to come in through here for Dinky King. But my main concern is that Kaio is going to squish him. Oh my god. Look, Kaio is so freaking... Kaio is so... What's the word? Ruthless? I think ruthless is the right word. And now Dinky King is actually expanding. Actually, hold on. Was this the initial expansion? No, this is a different expansion. Where are Dinky King's wood lines? Has Dinky King uncovered this wood line? Oh, Dinky King. Dinky King. Oh my lord, my mouse went a little bit wild there. Uh, honestly, at this point, I would be giving up these two landmarks. I would just be moving because free-for-alls typically have a very high chance of going late game. So as long as you can survive until the late game, there's the chance that you could pull off a snipe or a wonder victory. Uh, and so as a result, I'd be saying like, just pick yourself up, son. Move on, move on down. Come on, come on down to the nether netherland. Actually... I don't think that's a place you want to go. Uh, and is it Nether Netherland or Never Neverland? Uh, I think it might be Never Neverland. Maybe because I've got Nevix in the game, I'm thinking like Never Neverland. Uh, Kaio continuing to, to look pretty strong up into this position. Let's check in with the rest of the map. We can see Kor is uh, now beginning to struggle on water. He's actually dropped a keep down and the, the purple and the blue look to merge into one and become a single entity. But no, it doesn't look like it's going to be the case. Kor sitting on 122 vils. He hits H4. Uh, I'm assuming he goes for the College of Artillery. Where are his landmarks? There's no way he went for French Palace or uh, Red Palace, did he? Yeah, okay, there's College of Artillery. It's against the, the, the edge of the map, though. Honestly, watching this, man, it makes me so excited to, to see these guys go at it like this. Because it's it's obviously a bit of a meme match. Uh, so B-Dot was, uh, was the one who sponsored this. So he threw in $100. He said, the person who wins this match, I'll give him 100 bucks. So... B dot, thank you, man. Thank you for making, thank you make it for making magic happen right here. But uh, Dinky King now going to be looking to get out on water as well, keeping in mind the fact that he's got recon across the bay. He uh, he continues to to fall back as the spinning to winning uh, happens. We'll we'll take a look on the other side of the map because we've got ourselves a bit of a push. Beastie Cutie looking to try and come in and finish off his opponent. Bombard is finally out. You can see a lot of infantry coming out as well for Nevix. At the same time, the scout goes down with a couple of spies on their gold mine. 
But uh, now by the same token, it looks like Bombard going to have to retreat from this position. I don't think there's villagers nearby. Men at Arms looking to try and clean up. The Men at Arms are attacking. And Bombard going to be going down. A thousand resources gone to waste. But now Beastie looking to struggle. You can see that there is a lot of different colors on his minimap. He's got blue over towards his west, towards his north. He's got green. He's got teal up here. I'm not sure if he knows about salami, but he should. He's got yellow towards his east. To his south, he's got the dark blue. Actually, it's the same blue as this one. Core is looking to take control of the entire map. Look at the look at the line of sight the core is putting up right now. How many outposts you got there, Core? Core sitting on 10 outposts at this point in time. But now Dinky King continuing to struggle. Double trebuchets working their way through. And I think if Dinky King can survive from this position, I, I, the big thing for Dinky is getting Imperial, right? Like, I think that's the big thing. Dinky needs to get Imperial. If he can get to Imperial, he can make another landmark. Just, just get your landmark, I don't know, like put it right here. Just smack it down right there, Dinky. You're going to be A-OK, -okay, buddy. I, I love the concept. It's such an interesting... It's such an interesting concept, isn't it? Like, mega random. Like, you don't know what the map is going to spawn like. So you've got no fucking idea. Nomad. So you... It, even if you had an idea, now all of a sudden you've got absolutely no idea. And then it's a random sieve. So, oh, you're a Chinaman? Bad luck. Here's the Abbasid Dynasty. Good luck, mate. Spin to win on the water, beginning to unfold. At the same time, I mean, we've got Recon or Dinky King who's focusing a lot on water, but he's dying on land. And so it really begs the question, Dinky, what is up, my friend? Dinky, Dinky, don't do me like this. My fellow Australian Dinky. Uh, speaking of Australian, there's actually a second Australian in the game. We've got the, the MVP Snooper, but Snooper is actually beginning to struggle here. Salami doing quite a bit of work. You can see the... Well, what, what are those palace guards doing? You can see they wigged out there. Crossbow's beginning to push up. And I got to say, if, if there has ever been a time to advocate for a color picker, it is right fucking now. How beautiful is green? Is green not the most beautiful color in Age of Empires 4? Look at that beautiful color. Look at those builds. Look at the way that they're just dressed head to toe in green. You know, and by the same token, look at these beautiful military uh, pieces just carrying the green. This is, uh, this is beautiful. This is great stuff. This is what Age of Empires is all about. Uh, unfortunately, Dinky King loses both of his landmarks. He's down to one landmark. Now, Kaio probably knows where this landmark is. We did see that there was a bit of a snipe attempt that came through. or well, not a snipe attempt necessarily, but we did see that there was a bit of a raid that came through earlier. So the villagers may have headed back towards that position. Um, but, uh, I'm curious to see how Snooper's doing. Let's take a look in with Snooper. Uh, because this is where all the action is unfolding. Men at Arms going to be sieging down this counterweight trebuchet. It is a clock tower one. Uh, but at the same time, there are crossbows here ready to take it out. And Snooper actually losing a huge amount of his base. He's lost uh, multiple barracks at this point. He's losing his uh, his primary town center. Now, keep in mind, he's playing the Chinese. So when it comes to landmarks, he's got plenty of them, including this bad boy right here, the Imperial Palace. Uh, but by the same token, he has lost a lot of infrastructure. And Salami is absolutely doing him dirty. Let's take a look at Salami's base and see how he's doing. Because he is... He is so happy right now, Salami, because he's on three town centers. He's at 135 bills, and now he's just looking to trade out with the enemy. He doesn't even really care, you know, about losing units. It's not a big deal. And look at Salami sitting up here beautifully. Lovely little pocket he's got for himself. My main concern for Salami is the lack of walls. There, there's just no walls coming up yet. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I guess... I mean, is Salami probably realizes that Beastie Cutie has got his hands full. Now, he's scouted out the base of Beastie. He knows where he is, roughly. But his main concern here is going to be Snooper. And he'll continue to work on it. And Snooper not looking pretty. At the same time, we'll take a look in, at Dinky King and see how he's doing. And Dinky King has finally migrated. He has gone to the south. So, given up the initial base that he started with. Not really that he had a choice about it. And he's moved down towards this position into the center of the map. He's gone double TC here as well. The big thing for me, honestly, Dinky, wall it up, bro. Wall it up and just pocket yourself down. You'll be okay. But he does have hulks out on the water. What's the kind of... Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Recon is beginning to migrate because Recon... Oh, my God. Kaio is killing everybody. Look at this, dude. That's... Oh, that is already two people that are going to be going out just from Kaio. I mean, I say going out. It's not necessarily going out. But you guys get what I mean, right? Like... These players are not looking good. And we can see now Recon is doing a gr doing the right thing. Outpost going up to give himself a little bit of vision. Give him an indication of where his enemy's at. He knows that his opponent, Dinky King, is up towards the north somewhere, but yet to migrate down. So will he be able to find anything in un under here? It doesn't look like it. Uh, but uh, my main concern for him now is that Recon is in Castle Age. He needs to get to Imperial. 
because he needs to get another landmark down because this one is going down. These two will be going down very shortly. I don't think you can stop this French push. He's Imperial. He's got cannons. He's got trebuchets. He's got so many knights. He's got Arbletria. He's got absolutely everything you'd want. And at the same time, look at this beastie under attack from his opponent Nevix and now Nevix looking to push up here I suspect this is probably going to be a war, a war that we begin to see uh, all game I don't think these guys are going to really make any ground upon each other uh, but at the moment the, the score lead is going to be core that is the 30 minute score lead ding 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 it is core who is sitting at over 9,000 it's over 9,000 it is sitting at 9,000 uh, score right now uh, and uh, yeah, Core looking to continue walling up. I love that he's walling with one villager. This single villager has walled the entire way. Also going to be dropping that gate down. Wallalol up towards the north. It's going to be looking to defend. I think it might actually catch it. Salami, he's going to be able to take the entire army from Snooper. Oh, that's terrible damage right there. Snooper was coming in to try and take control of, of the scenario here, the situation. The, uh, <laughs> the trebuchet, though, it is going to be standing upright. And now all of the horsemen going to be turning upon their once friends as uh, they now begin to stab down those crossbows and Salami looking to steamroll over the top at the same time Recon in trouble. You can see the final landmark might be going down now right now for Recon. This is going to be it. Let's take a look from his perspective. He's got to be getting that landmark up. He's not. He's not. He needs to go to Imperial right now. If he doesn't, he's going to lose this landmark. You can see the Trebs and Bombards are looking at it. I, th I don't think he realizes. He's lost one, two. This is his third landmark. Where's that fourth landmark? Yo, Recon. Recon, this ain't good, my friend. Kaio gonna tap you out any second right now. And now we sl we move on board because he's about to get tapped out. Goodbye, Recon. Good night, sweet prince. And there he goes, ladies and gentlemen. The first player taps out at 31 minutes into the game, even though his tapping wasn't particularly... Um it wasn't particularly consentful. But uh, next on the line, next on the menu, probably going to be Dinky King. Kaio looking to take a lot of names, a lot of bases over towards that side. And now Salami just cleaning up the base of Snooper. We'll ride on board with Snooper for a little bit and see how he's doing. He's on to 70. He's got 69 villagers, though, so that's going to be nice for him. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, he was in such a great spot. He was looking incredible. And then Salami just rolled him. He absolutely rolled him. And I think the big part was, like, we saw in the early game that there were signs that Kaio wasn't going to be aggressive towards Snooper. Now, I don't know whether they'd spoken with each other, but you could see that they were, they were very friendly with each other. But now, we see that Snooper is running towards the base of Kaio, almost looking for a little bit of like, hey friend, help, help a brother out. Like, you got any town senator for me to garrison in? Anything like that? Nope. Okay, don't worry. I'll keep on doing my thing. But like, Snooper needed to focus on Salami, and he did focus on Salami. And Salami just walked over the top of him. Really a beautiful timing coming up from Salami with those three town centers. And unfortunately, Snooper probably going to be tapping out shortly. He's got the landmark that's still up in the back of his base. All the other landmarks have gone down at this point. You can see he's even got a pagoda out. Uh, but that is going to be his final landmark. So he's going to need to find another way to get another landmark in. Let's ride on board with Dinky King and see how he's doing. Because Dinky King is going to be probably the next victim, I suspect. Uh, we'll have a look and see how his expansion's going. He is He's actually doing pretty well. I gotta be honest with you. Dinky King looking good. I'm loving the way that he's expanded. I, I love the fact he's got 45 villagers on food and still doesn't have enough food. Like, he is draining food non-stop. It is crazy how much food this guy is spending right now. But this is just the classic English economy. Still yet to get the fertilization. Does obviously have the wheelbarrow. He's feeling good about himself. But uh, he's, actually, he's actually rallying units into Snooper's base. Oh, Dinky, you're so rude. I can't believe you uh, taken out a fellow Australian like that with men at arms he's getting double English he, it's a 2v1 and he's got English on both sides right now there's a spit roast and snoopers in the middle and he's got salami on one side and dinky on the other and oh my lord elite royal knights uh Kayo is meaning absolute business at this point in time he is on intent on finding some finding some more landmarks. He's taken control of this position up towards the north completely. You can see he's got a couple of trebs just chilling out in the base, but at the same time, he's beginning to move forward. Now, keep in mind, Dicky King, not yet age four, so he's only got that one landmark. If he loses that landmark, that is absolutely it. And that's uh, that, keep in mind, that's that 2,500 hit, hit point landmark. Now down towards the south, Carrick from Core going to be coming out, just doing a little bit of damage here, clearing up the shoreline. He's done a great job to take control of this, wrestle it back. Where, where did those forces go? Oh my lord, there go those forces. So for, for Dinky King, I need to see him going to Imp sooner rather than later because his last landmark... Where is his last landmark? Uh, it is going to be... It's the King's Palace. It's somewhere. I think it might be down. Yeah, it's down here. It's actually not, not a bad spot. Like, when you think about the way that Kaio's currently positioned... 
dude, look at the damage. Look at the damage. When you think about the way that Kaio is currently positioned, the fact that he's, he's coming down like on this, he's got a lot to work through. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of barracks actually. Now making spears. He doesn't actually. Oh, he's getting the veteran spear upgrade, but he's going up against the elite royal knights. That is going to be a little bit concerning because he is outnumbered, and you never want to be outnumbered by royal knights. That is never a good time. But he's going to continue funneling reinforcements into this. Hopefully, he can begin to build up a bit of a mass, but at the same time, keep going to be teeing off towards them. Going to be buffing it up with a network of castles, but it's not looking pretty right now for Dinky. Definitely a lack of walls coming in. Uh, here. It was so easy to wall across as well. You've got double ponds that you can wall across. Uh, just makes it very, very easy to just prevent. You know, it, it forces your enemy to bring up trebuchets. It forces them to bring up a cannon. And you can see that it's going to take time. And as a result now, you know, time is not something that you've got because you've got a whole bunch of units in your base now. Kaio is going ham. And I think Dinky knows that. But at the same time, Snooper... Oh, Snooper gets, Snooper gets tapped out. Snooper gets tapped out. I'm not sure if, if I... Uh, uh, I'm not sure exactly when that happened. You can see the villagers don't even have the ability to build anything. So one of the two Australians going to be tapping out. You can see he tried his best to get it back in. Uh, but all of the units here for Snooper, he was repairing it. Unfortunately, does go down. And now the attention is going to be turned on towards Dinky King. You can see that uh, we've we've actually got Kaio. I feel like he's looking for the landmark. Uh, Kaio probably, probably realizes that his enemy is, uh, is only in Castle. And that if he finds that landmark, it's going to be all good. But you can see... He's hidden it so well. I don't think Kaio realizes where that landmark is, but it's so close. I can hear trebuchets. I can hear them. Oh my lord, the trebuchets are so close, dude. The trebuchets are literally like half half a screen away from just being able to target that down, but he doesn't know where that landmark is. And now we see more blue, and at the same time on the backside, the elite horsemen together with the elite knights are doing their best, and Kaur just firing off a cannon into the middle of the battle. He's like, ha, I'm just going to... I'm just going to fire off my cannon. Look at him go, dude. What's the attack rate on those cannons? Damn, dude. Every seven seconds a cannon fires? Wow. Every seven seconds is seven... Oh, my. Now Core coming out. He's bringing out the elite Arbola Trio. He's also got the elite Royal Knights. And now Dinky King going to be getting double teamed from the south. Just when he was... D Dinky King was double teaming Snooper with Salami. Two English players going up against the Chinese, but now all of a sudden, it looks like we've got a double team coming in. Our two French players going up against the English. A little bit of a baguette. A little bit of an English sandwich, if you don't mind. But now, going to be heading in. Now, keep in mind, Dinky still yet to hit age four. Still struggling to make... Oh, my... Oh, 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 Dinky. Oh, no, Dinky. Dinky. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, Dinky. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. <laughs> oh, the trebuchets. Just, oh, all right. Uh, we're not going to watch Dinky. I don't want to know what happens, but I suspect it's not going to be pretty nice. We're watching, we're watching. I would have watched Snooper die as well if I had known he was dying. Oh, I'm sorry, Snoops. I would have loved to seen your death. But now the Bombard's just uh, cannon, Royale cannons, by the way, uh, moving up and doing so much damage. Look how effective they are. I love this composition. Uh, the elite Royal Knights, Arbolatrie, uh, as well as the, the Royal Cannons. Very, very strong. A lot of royalty right there. Uh, but now, Dinky's base getting completely cleaned up. He's on five villages. No, don't tell me. <laughs> uh, Dinky's not even moving at this point in time. Dinky's just like, hmm, hmm. Because keep in mind, I mean, Recon was actually down here. But he has died. But Core is uh, establishing vision. So he's going to be able to take players out if he so chooses. That King's Pal is still standing strong at this point in time. The Trebuchet is still unsure about exactly where it is. We'll ride on board right now with uh, with Core and see how he's doing as he continues to push out through the base of Dinky King and look for that last landmark. He's doing a huge amount of damage. And I gotta be honest, Core is starting to look like a little bit of a favorite for me. Core is uh, is slowly but steadily taking over this map. Look at the minimap right now. He's got vision absolutely everywhere. He's got walls up everywhere. And this is a great way to stop any kind of raids, any kind of action. Now, obviously, a player like Beastie's not the kind of guy that's going to be, you know, destroyed by a wall, if you know what I mean. Like, he's going to very easily find an answer to this, whether it be a bombard, whether it be, you know, a siege tower, something like that. But now he spots out the King's Palace. Is he going to be turning his attention towards it? It looks like the Elite Knight's going to be coming down towards it. Dinky King going to be tapping out very shortly. I'm sorry to see you go, Dinky. It was an absolute pleasure. But you just, at the end of the day, you just didn't spawn in on the right spot. Three people went next to you. Three people all tried to do the same thing as you. And I can't help but feel like maybe... There he goes. There he goes. 
and watching that, maybe I'm uh, I'm a little bit crazy in in thinking this, but like it seems like a good spot, but you're kind of counting on the fact that your enemy is not going to be on this side. Like obviously Nevix was very happy because he knew no one is going to be up here. No one is going to be behind him building a town center. And by the same token, Salami felt the same way as well up towards this north spot. Like you really can't get any more north than that. But then you kind of look at the way that Dinky King spawned in on this little peninsula here. Actually, is this a peninsula? It's more of a bay. Uh, uh, this little bay that he spawned in. It was a great spawn as well. He had such a good spawn. All the resources here. He had shorefish. He had the gold. He had the big gold mine. Where was the big gold mine? I think it was yeah, right here next to his town center. Uh, had the wood line right here as well. But unfortunately, it just didn't go his way. It, uh, it, it didn't go well. Now Salami doing what Salami loves to do. Let's check in with our, our boy Salami, the Wallalol God himself. He's quite happy with himself, I suspect. Uh, my main concern is that you could very easily chop through here, and that's exactly uh, what we might be having through. Salami, got to be careful. Uh, so one of the things... That, that, that looks a bit weird. So, what, yeah, one of the things you got to be careful about in free-for-alls is that your enemies will go for chop-throughs. Uh, and this is something that I've done before, or at least gone for before, is, like, if, if your enemy is aware, like, let, let's say, you know, Nevix or Beastie QD who are down here beginning to wall up. By the way, look at Beastie's walls. Beastie is actually making Castle QD. It is Castle Cutie that is coming up right now. Look at the way the walls are coming up. He is, but the thing is, right, he's trying to control so much area, so it's going to really spread his forces thin. Because he's only got 200 population that he can work with. You can't go any more than that. And keep in mind, this whole time, these guys have been fighting. Nevix, as well as Beastie Cutie, have just been fighting it out nonstop. It, it has been a constant battle between these two guys. And you can see Beastie's really struggling to push forward. Now, keep in mind, this is on the new patch. This is on the brand new patch where uh, mangonels have been nerfed. So Beastie got to be throwing off his mangonels, but <laughs> they're barely doing any damage. Look at him go. I think one spearman dies to the five mangonels. Uh, it's, it's good to see that the mangonels are in a, in a reasonable place now. Right, guys? Right, guys? Oh, I don't know. Nagadel's beginning to push up. He's got villagers here that he's bringing with him. Bombards on the back line as well. Going to be looking to do some damage. At the same time, taking out all those counterweight trebuchets, forcing them back. Manganel's getting off a good shot. Huge shot there, killing one, two longbows by the looks of it. Manganel's now turning around, going to begin turning atten their attention towards this central location. Wow, massive damage. One man at arms went down. <laughs> oh, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. Let's take a look at Nevix's perspective. I want to start counting the way that these units are going. Now, keep in mind, Nevix, at the same time, on his south flank here, has... Uh, has got a, a, a whole amount of, or a whole bunch of uh, of stone walls uh, that he's going to have to deal with here. Geometry finally coming through. Uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of extra damage here on the trebuchets, uh, but uh, now at the same time, um, up towards the north, he's walled himself in very well. I got to say, I, I do like Nevix's position. My, my my main concern is that he is very close proximity to Beastie Cutie, whereas like you've kind of got Salami, who's very happy up by himself up towards the north. And he's walling like a madman. He is actually walling like a madman. Look at the amount of walls that we've got coming out now. Two layers of walls from Salami. He is going ham. Now, he hasn't walled all the way yet. Probably needs to exhaust this, this berry patch here. But uh, we'll head back towards the main base because Nevix is once again looking to do a bit of a raid on Beastie. Going to get picked up here. Both players got their knights out today. Uh, but uh, now beginning to push forward Nevix with the trebuchet mass. And I'm assuming we've got a wing guard. And do we have a wing guard uh, back here, which is just pushing out wing guard armies nonstop. He's sitting on a casual 25,000 resources. Let's take a look at the resources. Let's, let's have a look at where these guys are at. Actually, we can't even see the resources. You can only see player score, landmark tracker, sacred site, and wonder. I think that might be a bug because players have tapped out. Maybe that's a bug. I'm not sure, but we can't actually see. So you can only see... I mean, we can see Landmark Tracker. You can see Beastie sitting on three Landmarks. Where did Beastie's fourth Landmark go? Oh my lord. It, wow. I have never seen more beautiful farming than this. Uh, Beastie's one Landmark, two Landmarks, three Landmarks. Is the Palace of Swabia, like, killed? Oh, oh, I think actually the Arkham Chapel might have died. Yeah, I think the Arkham Chapel died. You can tell because it doesn't say zero out of one. It should say zero out of one on it, and it doesn't. So the Arkham Chapel died. He's, he's healing it up now, but now a big battle begins unfolding. The Mangonel's doing what Mangonel's do best, and that's absolutely nothing. Uh, we'll take a look at the... You can see the damage come in, dude. It's hilarious. But keep on. This is 16 spears just getting slow, like getting attacked here with the Mangonel's. What, watch the shots coming out from the Mangonel's here. It's barely done. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, maybe, maybe the Mangonel's will do some work here. Okay. A lot of crossbows. A lot of crossbows. Mangonel's. 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 
Okay, that wasn't actually bad. It wasn't terrible. There's a lot of health on these guys. Actually, it's only 95. Six crossbows, I think, died to seven mangonels when someone was literally, like, in the shower. I say in the shower as, like, a way to say AFK because he, 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 all of his units just stood still while the mangonels shot. Uh, he did get a little bit of a split at the end. But uh, now at the same time, under attack in the middle, we got ourselves a bit of a run by. Nevik's going to be under pressure as the Spears look to try and track down the Knights of his opponent. These guys have got a great uh, bonus against Cavalry. You can see there, plus 28 against Cavalry. And th at the same time, like he's managed to come through all the way to the back of the base. But for Nevix, he's got Town Centers out the wazoo. Is he really that fast if he loses a few villages here or there? Ideally, I'd love to see him begin walling up a little bit more with stone walls. Just try and close the front here. You can, you can put plenty of gates in. That's not too, mu too much to fuss about. But keep in mind, if you do have gates, uh, it, it will cause the surrounding walls to fall when they do go down. But, I mean, I, I, I'd just rather have just... I'd, I'd rather just have it... Defend your wonder! Nevix has gone for a wonder? Nevix went for a wonder? Where's Nevix's wonder? I don't see any wonder. Oh! Okay, okay. You were talking about core overlay. Uh, core walling in the wonder doing the right thing. My main concern is he could have gone for the wonder here. And it just so it offers so many more avenues for walling. So you got to think about it right from the perspective of your enemy. So if you're core right now, okay, and you're playing this and you, you're, you're out over the map, you've killed all of your close allies, or, or, or rather your close uh, enemies, everybody's been kind of killed. So what threatens you at this point in time? Well, you know Beastie's up here. You've scouted out his base. You know Nevix is up there. You've scouted him out. Um, so you know that they're going to be coming in from that angle. So, I mean, they got, they're gonna, definitely going to have to come through you. But we got 15 minutes on this bad boy. You can see here, 14 minutes to go. But players probably going to be turning their attention towards Core now. So Core thinks he was in a good enough position that he can make a wonder. Now, you got to remember, as soon as you make a wonder, everything changes in free-for-all. The moment you drop a wonder, you are the bad guy. You know that song by Billie Eilish? It was written about the guy who builds the wonder. Don't build the wonder in free-for-all. At least don't build the wonder first. Honestly, build if, if someone else builds builds a wonder, build your wonder after them. And then, like, you, you just want to be telling everybody, like, oh, that's the guy. That's the guy. We have to take this guy out. He is the guy with the wonder. Yeah, I've got a wonder as well. But, like, you know, he's the he's the main concern, right? Like, we got to get that guy down first. Uh, but, yeah, for me, I would have been, like, I would have been thinking, like, okay, wonder down here. Stone wall. Stone wall. Stone wall. Stone wall, stone wall, and then you put those uh, the the stone towers on it as well because those things have got boiling oil, and that that's what I'm talking about, baby. Like stone wall, stone wall. Probably put the landmark in the back as well, but I mean the landmark here is actually pretty decent. The main concern I've got is that there's there's the potential to be dropped, and you know that like the French player is out here. He is on the map. He's actually trading right now. We've got Caio doing a little bit of a trade right now. Uh, very very interesting. Uh, that is that is interesting to see the fact that he's doing trading. Let's take a look in with him and see how he's doing what he's up to who his battles are against looks like he's going to be pushing on uh looks to be pushing on recon here uh oh sorry on on core rather uh so gonna be turning his attention down towards this position uh gonna have a little bit of trouble but i'm suspecting trebuchet is not too far behind indeed they are not so trebuchet is going to be pushing up so this is going to be the first battle that core is up against now keep in mind it's still quite a trek down towards this wonder we've got notre dame down here there's going to be one two Three walls to go through and a whole bunch of Royal Knights. So let's look to see how the fight opens because Core now going to be pushing out of his base. Looking to try. Uh, if I'm Core right now, I'm not even going for these units. I'm going for the Siege. Go for the Siege. And that's exactly what he looks like he might be doing. Mangonel's firing off a shot, managing to do 30. It's got a little bit of health. Uh, don't even think about the Mangonel's. I mean, you, this is like your secondary thing, right? Like you got more units coming after this. These units here, these ones are going for the Mangonel's. You're looking for the Trebs. You're looking for the Bombards. That's what you're looking for right now. Uh, they are the main concern because that's how your walls go down. And you want to stop your walls from going down. And there we go. He finds the siege. He's got to be able to take it down. So great job there delaying the game. Because now, you remember, the knights can't go through the royal the the, uh, the royal walls. The, the Well, sure, they're French walls. They are royal walls. Loses all the knights here, but he doesn't mind. He doesn't mind. At the same time for Kaio, though, uh, Kaio doesn't actually have any walls himself. And he's in a really good spot because... He could very easily wall up right now. You can see he's got 1320 stone. Uh, if we take a look on his minimap, what kind of stone does he have access to at the moment? You know what? This, the, it, it's such a such a fiesta right now, that minimap. I have got no idea. If I'm looking for stone, where am I even looking? Here? Okay, 3k stone. All of a sudden, take like 40 villages over here. I am walling up everywhere. I'm walling up here, 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 here. 
here, 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 here. I'm walling all the way up. I'm walling all the way in. Try and take control of the water in the same way that he's done now. So you can see his enemy doesn't really have any opportunity to dock. We've got a keep that's sitting up on the edge of the map, but it's not really doing much, is it? And now up towards the north, it looks like Nevix has broken through. Core is under attack. Nevix is beginning to move through. He's going to be again aggressing on the base. Now, keep in mind, Beastie Cutie is still doing run buys here. So at this point in the game... Oh, I think we might have a bit of an overchop. Is that an overchop? I'm not sure if that's an overchop. Uh, it's always hard to tell whether it's an overchop or, or not. It would be great. You know what would be really good? Oh, I just pressed the wrong button. If when you right click a villager and tell it to go here, it would tell you the route that it's taking. Like it, it gave you, like, you know, if you shift click stuff, it will give you that little line. Imagine if you did that, like, but it gave you the route. Like that, that would be so freaking good. Like a waypoint, but also a route. The same, now back in the base, uh, we've got uh, 44,000, 44,000 food at the moment for Nevix. I feel like that, you know, once you hit, once you cross the 44,000 threshold, I feel like that's a sufficient amount of food. Like you don't really need more than that. Nevix looking to try and clean up this wonder. He's moving down towards the south. Little bit of a position here Core's going to have to be defending on. Sacred sites are being taken now by Kaio. Uh, we'll, we'll do a quick check of the Sacred Tracker. One out of three for Kaio. At the same time, Wonder Tracker. We've got nine minutes and 40 seconds now for Core. We'll begin to ride on board with him. Uh, but keep in mind, we'll, we'll leave the the, uh, the map open. Let's take a look at, uh, at Core and see how he's doing. Core looking to defend on this flank. At the same time, where is that attack coming through from his opponent? Oh, he's broken through. He broke through with Carrix on the shoreline. The Carrix have broken through on the shoreline. Now a whole bunch of knights and horsemen going to potentially run in at the same time. All of the uh, elite the elite royal knights do get taken out. Needs to be focusing on that siege, though. Keep that in mind. Ideally, you just want to be stonewalling at this point in time. We'll take a look at Core. How's the guild hall doing? He's on gold. He's not generating stone. This is the this is a big mistake, I would say, uh, coming out from Core. Ideally, in this position, if you're going for a wonder, uh, you want to try and get that stone out. Wolf coming in on the action as well. Get him, buddy infantry. Get him, boy. Get him. Get him, boy. You stop him. You tell him. You defend that base for Core. And then now he gets a second layer of walls up completely. Beautiful little base going now. Also going to be looking to get bombards on these. Yeah, cannon emplacement's going to be coming through. And what's he short on? You guessed it. It's stone. 300 stone. Think about how good 10,000 stone would be about now. It would be incredible. I feel like as the French, actually, you're in a very good position to win free-for-alls. You go for, As long as you survive the early game, guild hall on stone, wait for someone else to build a wonder. You wait like two minutes after that. Direct everybody to attack that guy. Come on, guys. We've got to get that guy. Take out your stone. Wall all the things. Keep all the things. Bombard emplacement, all the things. Drop your Notre Dame and your Gucci. Drop your Notre Dame and your Gucci. Uh, Spirit Way in the middle of the map. Wait, how did Snooper die? Oh my god, Snooper died. He was trying to build a Spirit Way. The villagers kept building the landmark after he died. He died while he was building a Spirit Way. Oh, that feels bad, man. I've had that happen to me before. Oh, that is terrible. Dude, after watching this, I'm 100%. Like, I'm going to be going into the next... Like, next game I'm playing, it is going to be a free-for-all mega random. I'm not even kidding you. I'm not playing ranked. I'm not stuffing around with that ranked ladder. I'm going straight into this. Let's check in with Salami. Let's see how that guy's doing. Salami's the kind of guy... Yo. Yo. <laughs> Salami, what are you doing up there, buddy? What are you doing up there? <laughs> Sal I was going to say, Salami's the kind of guy... You got to watch out for him, okay? He is one of these guys. He is so sneaky. And uh, now manages to seal up this wall. Doesn't really have a lot of stone. French is, is the only Sith that's really got a way to get stone in the late game. I guess the other one is the Mongols. Yo, hey, I just realized we didn't have Mongols in this game either. You don't really... Mongols. Can you imagine Mongols going for a wonder victory? How do you even stop units? Destroy it. Enemy destroyed Nevix's landmark? Nevix? Oh, landmark. Oh, Nevix's landmark. Oh, Nevix is under attack. At the same time, we've got action down towards the south, but Nevix is getting killed by Beastie Cutie. Nevix has lost his landmark. Uh, so Treb's looking to try and defend, but at the same time, I I'm not sure exactly what landmark it was. Council Hall under attack. You can see Beastie Cutie must have been going for a snipe of some sort because he seems to have been cleaned up completely. Villagers were in on the mix as well. I apologize for missing that. Beastie definitely looking to try and take control. And we haven't even really seen much of Beastie yet. Let's take a look because he's in the middle of the map. L little bit of a chop through, little bit of a chop through. Salami coming through. We saw what was happening before. Salami actually coming through to take out Beastie Cutie in this position. This isn't good for Beastie Cutie. He heads back towards his base. I think he's aware that his enemy might be looking to potentially attack him. It's, it's Beastie Cutie. He is definitely aware that his enemy is looking to attack him. Chop through now coming through for Salami. I think he might have made his way through. He's probably got one more to go. That's the final tree. Do we see the, the, the cavalry begin to move? Now, keep in mind this cavalry. Uh, 
the knights have got more health, but the horsemen are faster. So you need to like, you need to weigh it up. Do I want to get all of my knights in there? Or like, do, do I want my knights? What, what, what unit do I want to use here? Do I want to use knights? Do I want to use horsemen? Horsemen going to be faster. Knights going to be, they're going to be a little bit healthier. But now you can see Salami, he chops the wall and he leaves it. He chops the wall and he leaves it. He says, okay, just so you know, just so you know, I am, uh, I'm going to be potentially attacking you. Uh, but uh, Beastie now, looking to try and... Uh, just, just chill out. He's just chilling out. Not, 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 not fussing at this point in time. Where's his infantry? Where's his mass? It's down towards the south. Oh, I think they've realized. I think Beastie Cutie has said, hey, yo, you, you're attacking me, but we've got a wonder to worry about. And right now, the wonder tracker indicates the core's five minutes away from victory. And that wonder looks pretty damn strong right now. Core still looking A-OK. -okay. We might have a core victory coming up from here. Let's take a look at Core's perspective and see exactly what he sees. He sees the military forces out outside of his base. He's got plenty of stuff in the queue. And all of a sudden, Core starting to look like he might actually be the victor here in this scenario. He's walled up. He's healed the wall up towards the north. No, he hasn't. Look at the flood beginning to build for Core right now. He has got to be worried. And now we can see that all the attention is starting to turn towards Core. People are looking over the map, looking to try and focus down his infrastructure, focus down his buildings. And now he's got Kaio, who's beginning to push in as well. We've got Beastie that's pushing in. We already saw the push coming in from Nevix. And at the same time, we've got Salami who's just on the back. Salami, don't you do it, Salami. Don't you dare backstab Beastie Cutie when he is taking down a man's wonder. You don't do him like this. Oh, Salami. I can't believe you. We're going to have to watch from Salami's perspective. Okay. All right. He's heading back to his, enemy, to his own base. Good stuff. But he's playing it smart, though. That's the thing, right? Like, he, kno he knows the Beastie Cutie is a threat. And now look at Salami sending out some scouts, quite literally scouting out. You know, are people working towards this victory? Are people looking to try and make sure that I can stay in the game? And behind this, Salami looks to capture up the sacred sites, find himself a bit of a gold trickle. He knows about this wonder. He knows that there's a potential threat. It will He will lose the game. And now at the same time, look at the Mangonels just trying their best. Sorry, Mangonels, you're going to need more buffs than that. Uh, I'm just kidding. Mangonels, rest in peace. But now down towards the middle of the base. Four core here is under attack. The knights are beginning to move through. You can see the defenses here. Core just looking like he's got a huge army sitting right now with 150 military population. He's got no... He, he's got absolutely no villagers. I say that. He's got 50 villagers. But still, he's got no villagers. <laughs> He's got no villagers. Um, my main concern for Core, I guess it would be a drop over here because you drop and then you come through and like you, there's there's two layers of walls to work with. Plenty of cannon emplacements on these bad boys though. They're going to be looking to fire off and you can see Core is looking to defend. Ideally, keep the mangonels behind the wall. Keep all of these bad boys up on top of the wall. That would be my way to defend it. But now we can see that there's a bit of a struggle. Core looking to be pressured at the same time. He's probably going to be going up and diving for this siege. Look out, hand cannoneers. Look out, hand cannoneers. You guys got a lot of health, but I'm still worried about you. Those mangonels do mean business. And now down to this is the real army he's got to worry about. Those trebuchets are really what gets scary. And you can see Core is beginning to struggle. We'll check the wonder tracker. Less than three minutes for victory. Those dongs don't go dinging at this point in time. We'll check in with Salami. I will watch it from his perspective because... What are you doing, Salami? What are you doing? He's scouting out. He's scouting it out. He's looking to make sure. He is so intent. And now castle wall is going to be coming down. I do say castle because when you get a whole bunch of walls and some keeps, that is a castle. That is, I, I, I learned that the hard way. It's not called a castle. Uh, that, that thing that we've got in Age of Empires 2, the castle, that's not really a castle. It's actually a keep. A, a castle encompasses all of the walls, the keeps, all of that. But now the knights on the front line, Mangonel's on the back line looking to try and get off. They fire upon their own units doing barely no damage. Even if they had friendly fire, they wouldn't do anything because they don't do any damage. <laughs> Oh, geez, but now the push really starts to come around, and this could be it. I don't think this goes through. The Wonder Tracker will take a look at how it's doing. Wonder Tracker, two minutes and six seconds to go. You're going to hear those gongs go off any second right now, I suspect. There they are, two minutes until Wonder Defeat. Now this is the perfect time to get your own Wonder down. Salami, no, he's backstabbing his enemy. Salami going for his huge snipe at the same time. He knows that the wonder victory is going to be prevented. He sees all the trebuchets. He scouted it out already. He knows all the problems are going to be solved. And now at the same time goes for a massive attack on his opponent. Red Palace going to be the one that he's lining up first. We've got a little bit of FPS lag because there's so many units. At the same time, that wonder down towards the south. Still yet to take any damage on it. But Salami moves in underneath the Red Palace for the first time in this game. The Red Palace not going to absolutely shit over everything. 100 40 units right there. 
Still Notre Dame yet to be taken out. We'll take a look at how Salami's doing. He's continuing to look right now. Keep in mind, Salami is exploring for the first time in this game. He's got no idea where these landmarks are. Now going to begin following it up with a few more. He's sitting on eight economic units. He's got 192 military right now. He is all cashed up. Notre Dame still trying to hold on at this point in time. You can see the Culverin coming out. Royal Culverin coming out. One minute to go until one, until one to defeat. Core listening to Drongo. He puts all of his hand cannon ears up on top of that wall. They're going to be trying to defend it. But now, now the Notre Dame is under attack. He manages to take out. There's one more trebuchet. No, no. The Culverin goes down. And now he's actually not going to be able to hold on to this position. All the bombards moving forward for Beastie Cutie. And at the same time behind this, Salami taking out. Kaio, Kaio, all of his units are making their way back towards nowhere. All those units, all the units are heading forward, but Kaio's going to be tapping out any second. The lamp, the wonder goes down. We managed to catch it, the remnants of it, but now that final town center, where is that last landmark? Where is that last landmark? You can see all of the, uh, all of the elite royal knights are here. All of the <laughs> elite royal knights trying to defend against Salami's onslaught. He's looking for that last landmark. We'll go to the landmark tracker so we can see. Kaio's got one left. Kaur's got one left. Kaur is beginning to struggle. He's got that single left landmark at, at the backside and salami is looking but he's he's got the brain too big where is that last landmark for kayo surely he knows where it is it's right here it's right here he's just missed it he just missed the landmark he ran past it he's searching he's trying his best to find it he's got all the cavalry in the world but unfortunately none of the light of sight and now salami manages to to sit in a very advantageous position because his biggest threat core was taken out and he didn't even have to do anything for it this whole time he's got eight villagers just doing a little bit of a dance up here how oh my lord that's a, that is a big ui element and now finally he finds it he runs past and all of a sudden he spots the guild hall the guild hall with 3100 stone in it is going to be going down very shortly kayo going to be tapping out undoubtedly unless he's managed to get one of these landmarks healed back up and no, he hasn't actually done it. He's going to be going out. Kaio going to be losing the game right here because that is it. Ladies and gentlemen, Kaio is tapped out. And now we are down to four. Beastie Cutie, who spawns in the middle of the map at this one hour mark into the game. He's doing relatively well. His main beef is with Nevix to his back, who is constantly a, a, a pain in his side. Uh, our next player is going to be Nevix, his opponent, uh, who is... Uh, He's kind of stuck in here. I'll be real. I feel kind of sorry for Nevix. Um, he doesn't really have a way onto the map. Like, I feel like he is just... He is landlocked. Let's just put it that way. You know, Beastie Cutie is out there. He's trading with the world. And and Nevix, he doesn't even... Like, he hasn't uncovered 20% of the map at this point. Yeah, maybe 30%. He, he hasn't uncovered 30% of the map. But now... He's up to 74 villagers. And I love the way that these guys are playing it, where they just delete their villagers. Like, they've literally gone, like, 150 villager boom into... Into mass, inf uh, into mass infantry, into mass military. But now Nevix heading back towards his base. Um, he is not in a position really to go for a wonder. Uh, so I think he's more playing for the uh, the landmark sniping game. And speaking of landmark sniping, I did see the core was down to one landmark. It's his guild hall. It's in the back of his base. It's one that he managed to keep safe. You can see his base in, is in absolute ruins. He's down to 48 economic units. He's continuing to lose them over to men at arms on Beastie's gold mine over here. I say Beastie's gold mine because Beastie's the one who's taken control of it. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, we've still got this opening for, for Salami. Salami is potentially going to be looking to snipe Beastie. He's sniped out one player already. He could go for more. Uh, and speaking of, of players, so, I mean, really, at this point in time, it's a three-horse race. Because Core, I suspect, I mean, he is making villages at this point in time. He could potentially look to go for another wonder. Uh, but the real threat at the moment is Salami. I love the way that he's playing. He's got mass amounts of walls. He's got only eight villages. So he's got a full military at this point in time. But the big thing is, he doesn't have a wonder. And that's going to be his downfall. Because I feel like in this position, wonders are really what can win you the game. Uh, but ideally, you'd want to wait for your enemy to go for a wonder. But I mean, realistically, looking at this, you don't even need to go for a wonder. Don't tell me he's... Yeah, he's coming in for another one. He's gone for another one. I, I don't think this has been closed. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it hasn't been closed. So we'll have to see how uh, how Beastie's going to be able to deal with this. Because now it really begins to... Now it really begins to happen. Look at this. There are so many freaking cavalry units in here. I feel like at this point, you don't even put them in the same control group. Like, you've got to start moving them in different control groups. Uh, because... Uh, if you've got them all 
in in this one control group. Oh man, look at that. We need to cut. We need to cut more room in here. We need to get some more room in here. Beastie now looking to siege down the the outpost of Salami and Salami beginning to come through. Let's take a look at how Beastie's responding. He's deleting his barracks in the middle of his base. Drops down a defensive keep. Beastie knows that it's coming and he is preparing. We'll take a look from his perspective and see what he sees as the units begin to charge through. They are intent on sieging down all of the landmarks. The Palace of Swabia are going to be the first one up for breakfast today. Is Beastie Cutie going to be able to hold on to this? We'll head into the cinematic mode now to begin witnessing it in all of its glory. There are 200 military units running through this base right now and Beastie Cutie fights for his life. The Bombard's going to be trying to hold on in this position. Village is coming out as well. The keep does go down. It's going to have the boiling oil. We see the emplacement coming through on it now. It looks like the Palace of Swabia are going to be going down at the same time. Where are the rest of those units? Where are the rest of those units? Let's have a look. No, I think this is all the units that we've got right now. It's just 200 horses stacked on top of each other. It looks a lot less like 200 horses. But now focusing down the main town center. Keep in mind, he's got that Regnitz Cathedral that he's got to be taking down as well. But now the emergency repair comes down onto the, uh, the, the landmark that he's got down towards the south position. Keep in mind, this landmark doesn't have as much health as the main town center. Not next to the keep. So was it the right decision? He's got the Ragnitz right here next to the the, uh, the the keep as well. And we'll take a look from the perspective of Salami. I want to see what his military population is at this point in time because I feel like he's lost a lot of units. Indeed he has. He's down to 100 and 108 military units and now begins sieging down the Ragnitz Cathedral. He's taken down two of the landmarks so far. There are two landmarks that now remain for Beastie Cutie. The first one is the main town center. The second one is the Ragnitz. Look at the village account for, for Beastie right now. Look how many villagers are healing this up. 42 villagers. There is no such thing as insufficient wood when you are Beastie Cutie. You are just absolutely getting your junk out everywhere. Impressive stuff for Beastie Cutie. He is holding on in this scenario. Bombards just firing indiscriminately upon the civilians as well as on the horsemen. And it looks like Beastie may have held this push. Indeed he has. Salami going to be heading back to the drawing board with 15 population in the bank right now. Where does he go from here? That is the question because now Beastie turns his attention towards he who attacks Beastie. Don't you dare attack Beastie Cutie. But keep in mind at the same time, behind this, we've got the one who looks to upset the game completely. It is Nevix. I, I, I love that, like, Nevix is slowly sieging. Like, he's got two trebuchets. He's got a whole bunch of infantry. He's playing it like it's Castle Age. And he's, like, he's got his trench here. Like, he's scared of, like, a little bit of a cavalry push. And meanwhile, like, Salami is, like, just, just ram him in there, boys. Just get him in there. 200 of your finest horsemen. Just get him in there. And, he, and that's what he does. And it works. I mean, it worked with air quotes, like, it didn't really work because Beastie Cutie is still alive. But, I mean, that goes to show you, I know that there are a lot of people, uh, I'm looking at you, Reddit, that would say that, you know, 200 horsemen and knights sieging down my landmarks, there's nothing that I could do. I don't know. Maybe there was something that you could do. Maybe there was something you could do. It, it, it feels like Beastie Cutie found something that he could do. He gets the keep up. That gives the boiling oil you know, immediately next to this. He, he probably could have even looked to have deleted these and get more keeps up. Um, but, you know, he, he knew it was coming and he prepared for it. He did the right thing. He, it was appropriate. Uh, so very well played for him. Now Navix looks to push in towards the base of Beastie. Mangonel's firing off from underneath the keep. But you got to ask to what end because they are Mangonels and they're not the prettiest. Uh, but now also up towards the north side. We see a breakthrough coming. Beastie looking to try and finish off his opponent with just a handful of knights. 30. 30 is a handful. I got myself a fresh coffee delivery. So big shout out to my fiance. Thank you, fiance. Uh, thank you for this coffee because we're an hour and seven minutes through this game and I've never needed caffeine more than now. Mm. That is delicious. Uh, but keep in mind, even though we've talked about these three players, that there is still a fourth player that we haven't really talked about for a while because they have been, well, they've been slowly recovering from the wonder. And this is the consequence. If you go for a wonder, let this be a lesson to all you wonder builders. This is what happens to you. You will die. Almost. Almost. Uh, Beastie going for a landmark snipe here. I feel like it's kind of half in vain. Well, not, not half in vain, but like not, not, a, not a heartfelt attempt. Let's say that much. Like, what, what were you going to do with 30 cavalry in its beastie like i think the intent was just rather to distract his enemy rather than to actually do any meaningful damage but we'll take a look at from Be beastie's perspective and see how he's doing as he spots knights once again on his perimeter salami deleting more no that's beastie deleting more he deleted some houses yeah oh he's looking at a stone wall look at that beastie deletes houses and then stone walls across i love the way he's playing He's got these beautiful rings of stone walls coming up now. Going to be stopping any potential uh, threats of run buys. There's actually a very open way to his base uh, where you don't actually have to, to cut holes through the tree. And Big Corp coming in with a raid. Thank you very much, Corp. Great to see you, mate. Ho hope that you're doing well, fella. 
Uh, but now at the same time, Woodline going to be under attack. Beastie just harassing his enemy, finding a way through. Keep going to be looking to apply some pressure out towards the Sacred Site in the middle. Keep in mind, Sacred Sites are always a victory condition you can look to achieve. But Salami looking stronger as the game continues moving forward. His score continues to rise. It's further, or it's above the other players, despite having no villagers for a large portion of time. Beautiful wall coming up here for Beastie. He does not have any more stone. Actually, do we have a market out here? Where's that market? I want to have a look and see. You you got the 100-year war over there. Don't mind that. Uh, I want to check the market rates at the moment. I probably missed the market. I'm sure it's in here somewhere. Uh, I would love to see the market rates, but I suspect they're absolutely terrible for stone right now. I suspect in, in, a, in a game like this, stone is really going to be what, what is, you know, what is holding you back at this point. Um, look. Wow. Okay. All right. Okay. I like it. I like it. Salami. Going for the classic. Th this is what we call the berry bark shear wall in. Uh, this is where you wall in the berries to keep them safe and you guard them with a bark shear. Uh, and you make sure that you don't ever build any gates. Because if you build a gate with these walls, it actually reduces the health on the wall. Let me let me show you an example. Oh, you can see Salami. He's done. He knows, dude. He knows you don't build gates on the walls because it fucks you up. Okay, he's got one gate here. So this gate is 3,900 health. The wall next to it, 4,500 health. You target the gate and then the whole wall falls down. And it's, it's uh, easier to target as well because it's got less health. But now Salami looking to set himself up a bit of a staging point. What is Salami doing down here? He's intent on coming down towards this position. Now Core actually doing a bit of a trading. 305 gold coming in a trip right here. Let's check in with Core. Let's see how that guy is doing. He's got the fishing economy going. Okay, all right, Core. Not, d hasn't got the fishing upgrades, though. You know, we're an hour and 10 minutes into this game. Still no fishing upgrades for Core. Uh, impressive stuff, Core. You know I love you. Uh, repairing the main town center. He's looking to get back out onto the map. He's managed to make his way back up to 191 population. Uh, sieging down the... I like that he sieges down this dock to place down his own dock over here. Is that it? Core, what, what are you doing, Core? What's your plan? Are you going for a second wonder? I, th I think if someone... if That was the wall alone. If someone else goes for a wonder, Core should be making a wonder. I definitely think that's it. But... Uh, d just don't tell any of the other players. Beastie looking to try and push in now. I feel like Bombards have almost replaced Mangonels, dude. Because Th they're so much more efficient, right? Like, they're firing once every 5.25 seconds. 5.75? Eh, maybe not. Let's let's see how much damage these mangonels do as they come in for a bit of a kiss. Firing in on the front line. Wasn't terrible. They, those units were grouped together. Wasn't terrible, though. Uh, let's see the next one. He, he might go on the back line. Indeed, he does. <laughs> they don't even... <laughs> I didn't even think one of those units died, dude. Oh, my lord, dude. Oh, my lord, dude. This, this poor... This poor mangonels, dude. Meanwhile, like, me over here as a nest of bees enjoyer, I'm, I'm just having a good time, dude. I, I, I am A-OK. -okay. I'm making nest of bees out the wazoo. I'm having a great time. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Nevix now, he manages to stabilize. He's held on, but the thing is, right, I feel like Nevix and Beastie are pushing up against each other. Nevix is never going to be in a position to make a wonder. That, that, that's out of the question for him. He doesn't have the resources. He doesn't have the map control for it. So even if he wants to place a wonder up in this back corner, he's not going to be able to do it because he just doesn't have the resources for it. Now, you could... You could argue that, like, maybe he could do a bit of trading or something like that. But the reality is there's no possible way that he, he is going to be able to afford it. Uh, and so the next question is, like, is Beastie Cutie uh, going to be able to do it? Well, Beastie's definitely got the resources for it. He's definitely got the map presence to do it. He's had access to stone for the majority of this game. But the question is, where does the last stone remain? There's 3k sitting in the middle over here. Uh, do we have any more? It's so hard to find it. And it's the, at this point where I start to think, well, maybe map filters would actually be decent. In this late game scenario, like, I basically want, like, enemy units and, like, put enemy units and, and stone mines on. Like, I don't want to see gold. I don't want to see the boar. I don't want to see berries. I don't want to see, like, I don't want to see deer up here. Like, that's not relevant to me. I'm an hour and 12 minutes through this game, man. Like, just show me, show me the stone. Show me the stone. But, uh, we continue to see the, uh, the battle building upon this front. Trebuchet is actually doing pretty well. I'm getting I'm getting remnants of, uh, of the disgusting, you know, we did a video on YouTube recently. Uh, this, this, uh, it would actually featured core. It, it, the title of the video was, this English strategy is absolutely disgusting. And essentially what you do is you have seven trebs like this and you just focus down all of the enemy siege. And look at the siege that's coming out for Beastie right now. Beastie sitting on 11 bombards. Is this really the way that we play it now? Is he going into mass bombards here? And it's like the trebuchet is almost like a counter, um, it's, it's almost like a, a culverin at distance where 
You, you can see that. Watch the damage that he does. Down, down goes another one. And keep in mind, these are English trebuchets, right? They've got the extra attack speed. These guys are attacking every eight seconds. So, like, he's losing a siege. And look, now he's actually hitting multiple siege units. So the trebuchet is actually pretty decent. English trebs, not that bad. English trebs get multiple buffs as well. Keep in mind, they got shattering projectiles as well as that network of citadels uh, that's going to buff them up. It is network of castles, but network of citadels is the upgrade. I guess it's still technically the network of citadels. And now trebs. See, that, that's the thing, right? The trebuchets do miss, but they, the thing is they've got such crazy range that it's just insane. I think it, it's definitely viable for him to go for like a landmark victory. The, the thing is, right, it's, it's so hard because of defender's advantage. So you look here, right? Look how far Nevix has to reinforce with, right? Like all of his units die. They come out to this position and they, ha they have to walk all the way back out here. Whereas the closer you get to Beastie's base, let's say he pushes all the way here, well, now all of a sudden, Nevix just has to walk even further. Whereas Beastie, he's closer to his reinforcement, so he's naturally going to push back faster, quicker, all those sorts of things. And now you can see the trebuchet is just doing what Trebs do. He's pushing forward with it. Keep going to be coming down now. Not a lot of resources in the bank at the moment for Nevix, with the exception of, uh, with the exception of food, of course. There's plenty of food. Uh, his, his people are well fed. A little bit of a raid up towards the north. Nevix has got to be careful of a potential overtop. Ideally, you'd like to see him stonewall in the whole thing, but he's he's sitting on 2k stone, which isn't isn't a small amount. But I, I, I like the optimism here with Beastie actually going for a um going for an emergency repair when there's like 10 trebuchets out. Like, nice try. Nice try. Uh, that's a lot of trebs. Well, I, I honestly don't even know what do you do against this many trebs at this point in time. Like this, this is a lot of trebs. I guess you could look to do a run by and just go for a, just siege them down, but you will lose your entire army. And now Beastie going to be turning the attention over towards the north. Navix going to be under attack once again from this position. At the same time, heading up towards this uh, this place, looking for a bit of a defense. Navix going to be under attack. Let's take a look at where his where his landmarks are. In fact, let's take a look at the landmark tracker. Uh, landmark tracker. Oh, I'll get it. Don't worry, boys. He's sitting on four landmarks at this point in time. Uh, big Elite 500 coming in with the host. Thank you very much, Elite 500. Hope you're looking forward to some Age of Empires 4 content. Guys, welcome. This is this is not what you would be used to. This is not League of Legends. Uh, this is Age of Empires 4, baby. And uh, we got ourselves a little bit of a crazy game. We've got a free-for-all going on right now. And what's happening is Nevix is actually getting his... Uh, Getting his landmarks sniped, and we can see the first landmark going to be going down. If he loses all of these landmarks, it's going to be a good game. He's got his second landmark, third and fourth landmark here. And we can see the Beastie does continue to do a run-by, but at the same time, those bombards for Beastie are heading back. And now at the same time, more and more attacks just continuing to unfold. And do we have ourselves a potential run-by coming through? Salami smells it. We'll take a look at Salami's perspective. Even though we're watching this battle continue to unfold, I think it's been completely cleaned up. I say completely cleaned up. It's not really a clean up from this point. Uh, but, uh, I mean... I I start to get worried right now because Salami, he is posturing once again. You can see he's made his way up to 50 villagers. Very Salami-esque. Uh, but uh, Salami looking... Looking quite strong in this position. I think he might be looking for another snipe on Beastie. You can see that he's chopping through the wall. So Beastie did manage to, to build the wall all the way up to this point. So he's walled himself in. But now Salami going for a bit of a chop through once again. Keep in mind, Beastie, his attention is drawn over towards the eastern flank. More men at arms beginning to come out trying to protect these bombards. Bombards moving off in multiple directions. He's doing a great job of keeping these alive. But keep in mind, they sit lying in wait, ready to go. The elite knights. And the question is, how does he look to um, how does he look to take them out? Because we've seen it before. We've seen exactly how Beastie responded to that. He did very well. Bombards. Uh, there, there's even more bombards out now. And keep in mind, these bombards they two shot a uh, they two shot a, a knight. Actually, let's take a look. Three twenty four damage uh, with eight armor. So that bring that gives them essentially. Uh, so now we've got two hundred and four. Yeah, yeah. They, they definitely two shot a knight. Um, but now bombards looking pretty strong. More more run buys coming through. Keep in mind. You know, every, every time he runs by his, runs units by, there is a response that needs to be given by Nevix. And so he needs to turn his attention towards that. Culverin now coming out, looking to actually take out the trebuchets. They do a great job. They've got that extra range on them. But at the same time, we still don't have that push coming in from Salami. He's cognizant of the fact Core might be looking to get something over him as well, uh, down towards the south. So always going to be focusing that on that. And now the battle of 100 years continues to unfold on this, this front. Uh, hand Cannon is doing a great job of just taking down the Culverin. You can see them moving forward. But uh, Bombard's actually getting taken out by the Trebs. You can see them just unpacking towards that position. And the Trebs are really looking to move up. And now we continue to see another raid coming inside the base. Does get shut down. A lot of units back here. And keep in mind, all those reinforcements that are coming out from Nevix have got to walk further to get to this front line. To get to the front of the battle, they have got to be... Uh, 
they have got to be walking even further. So as a result, it means Nevix is not happy with his position. He's going to have to fall back. Trebuchet is going to have to move out as well. And we still don't see that run by coming through just yet. In fact, it looks like Salami might be dealing with some run bys of his own as Core begins to come out onto the map. He's got out multiple knights, but still there is potential. Still, there is the way to get through, to go past these walls. I'm, I'm wondering whether, I, whether any player is actually going to be able to find it. Core moving over the middle of the map. Looks like Salami is going to be fighting for this 130 gold that's left on this gold mine. Uh, but uh, we, we enter into a bit of a lull. I want to check in with Core, our player down towards the south, who made the mistake of building a wonder once uh, and lost the game as a, as a result. Uh, I say lost the game. I mean, he's still technically in the game. But is he really, though? Is he really? Is Core really doing anything? He's still got the Guild Hall on gold instead of going onto, uh, in instead of going onto stone. He could be doing his trading out over here. Uh, I'm not sure why he's not doing the, tra doing the trading. Has it been shut down? Did Salami shut it down? Nope. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like Salami shut it down. So he's still free to trade. So he could be getting his gold from trading and his wood from trading and then just be investing in stone. But now Salami finds a big bit of stone. At the same time, Core going to be looking to contest it. Says, hey, that's my stone. You get out of it. And at the same time, Salami's still chilling out, uh, hanging out with his own uh, cavalry. Look at the cavalry mass potential from him. There's just so much infrastructure that is back here. Look at the way that he's doing it. He's deleted a whole bunch of units in the back of the base as well. So it could be looking just to wall up the town center. Always something that you want to be uh, cognizant of is that your enemy... Oh no, we do have Salami cleaning it up. I do apologize. There it is. So Salami is looking to clean up water as we get ourselves a bit of a, a graphical glitch. Uh, so Salami did indeed come in. He's got his docks out. Uh, not the first time he's had his docks out, let's say that much. Uh, a mining camp gonna be scouting out, and we hear, we hear trading, Co no, Core. Core's going for another landmark, or another wonder. No, wait, that's Salami. Salami's going for a wonder. That's not Core. You can hear that, that sound? That's the market. That's the market. That's the market being traded right now. He's going for another, oh, look at Stone. Stone is 390 right now. Wood only 58, food, of course, down at negative 14. Not really negative 14, it's at 14. 390 gold for 100 of stone. That's a, that's actually not a bad deal, four for one. I tell you what, it's a great time to be a stone trader. But uh, he's going to be looking to drop down a, a, a wonder anytime soon. I can sense it, I can smell it, I can feel it in my bones, in my jimmies. And he's got more than enough, and now the characters begin to push through. I think he's just looking to try and close up this shoreline, any potential of a run by up towards that north side. But keep in mind, he is open towards this position, and I don't think he's aware of it. So I'd, I'd love to see, like, if we take a look from Core's perspective, Core doesn't actually know. He doesn't know the layout of Salami's base. So he's not really in a, th a position to threaten him. Because when it comes to these late-game free-for-alls, it's about understanding the layout of the map and the best way that you can exploit it. As an example, for uh, if you know where Core's base is, then I would be advocating for drops, just simply because you can run in and you can literally kill everything It's not behind a stone wall. Whereas if you take a look at Beastie Cutie's base, there doesn't really seem to be a way to exploit it just because he has been putting himself in a central location and now look at the bombards. Oh my Lord, is Beastie Cutie, do you have enough bombards? I feel like uh, once you get to 11 bombards, you've probably like, that's probably enough. I feel like you've, you've got enough bombards at 11, but I'm sure he continues to add them. Yeah, he does continue to add them. Look at that. He's still got more siege coming out. Do not, do not fret my friends. He has got more siege coming out. Look at the, look at the money he's got in the bank as well. This is absolutely wild. And now Scout's going to be coming out as well, looking to try and siege this down. We talked about it a little bit earlier. You know, how do you actually take this down? Because keep in mind, the closer you get to the enemy base, the more reinforcements they get. And once again, Beastie coming in for a, an attempted landmark snipe. Not going to have a lot of luck. He's only doing it with 30 cavalry. Doesn't he know the right way to do it is with 200 cavalry units? And now, at the same time, Beastie is getting attacked. Look on our minimap. We are watching Beastie's perspective. Look up to the north of the minimap, directly under that N. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. We have got a second wonder for this game coming out. Now, the question is, does anybody else go for a snipe like the one that Salami is going for right now? You can see all the units sitting here lying in wait to go. And I think Salami almost says, you know what? I'm not even interested. I'm not going to go for the snipe. There's way too many units here to do it. So he doesn't bother. And now Salami going to be looking to hold on. Now, the wonder timer, it's going to be 15 minutes, remember? We've seen our first wonder in the game. Now it's time for our second one. Uh, and... Uh, I mean, Salami well and truly ahead on score. Core is, is down in the 17,000. 
Nevix at 14,000, Beastie at 16,000. So players, all relatively even with the exception of Salami, who's still quite far ahead. But Core continues, or rather, uh, Beastie continues to fight with Nevix on his backside. And this has really been like, you know, we, we talked about this in the early game. These guys were fighting it out. I remember there was a keep dropped. This keep was dropped at like 12 minutes, 13 minutes into the game. These guys have been fighting for more than an hour now, and no headway has been built on either side because they've had constant issues to deal with themselves. You've had people breaking into Nevix's base. You can see down here towards this position another keep was going to be going down you've had people looking to do run buys on bcq just non-stop action and every single time nevix gets closer to his opponent's base then the reinforcements take longer to get there and as a result in these post-imperial fights it's just never going to be able to work you need to be getting uh, you need to be moving your infrastructure up with it and that's the only real way that you can make any sort of headway in that position but now, down towards the south core, probably going to be looking to turn his attention up towards the north. We'll ride on board with him for a bit as his army... No, that's not army. That's a, that's a villager. That is a, a bunch of villagers that are heading up towards this northern position. He is looking to try and gain line of sight up here. And players will be working together trying to stop the threat that is Salami. Because he represents an existential threat to every single one of them. Salami continues to sit here with a couple of characters in the bay of core. Uh, doesn't really find too much now. I could probably look to even delete these at this point. It's not not a lot of pressure that's going to be applied. But now up towards the north, we hear those characters just doing work. He's actually just decided I'm going to start firing out the stone walls and just annoy you a little bit more. And you can see the army for core really coming out. He's got 144 military. He's going to be looking to push across the map. You can see the bombards actually moving out towards those characters. I think he just wants to stop any potential damage coming through uh, from that. But now we'll head in. We'll check in with Salami and see how he's doing because he is going to be on the receiving end of this attack today, it seems. He has been very safely sitting up the top side of this map. Not a single person has even looked in his direction. We had, you know, we had one Australian player by the name of Snooper who attempted uh, to look in his direction and was very, very quickly told, look away, my child. Uh, this is too dangerous for you to handle. And indeed, it was too dangerous for him to handle. Uh, but now the question is, will they be able to stop Salami's wonder? Because that wonder, all the way at the back of his base, is being walled in. And you can hear players right now, that sound that you hear occasionally, like a little clicking sound. That is the sound of players talking to each other, communicating, saying, hey, let's all attack Salami. Let us begin. Now, we can't actually see the chat in game yet. Uh, put it on the list, Drongo. That's a, the list of things... Um, that's the, the list of things uh, that we need to see. But you might be wondering how long do we have left on that uh, on that wonder tracker we'll take a look it's got less than 12 minutes remain right now once that wonder once that uh wonder is down to 12 minutes then that is it couple knights moving through find a very big mass of knights there and this is a very potent threat okay this represents a huge threat but i, I really got to appreciate what salami is doing okay the, the thing about salami okay is typically what's going to happen Bombards are going to break through these walls first two walls and then the knights are going to run in and say let me at him but the problem is that they just run into more stone walls. So now you're in this scenario where as as an enemy trying to take out Salami's base, there's not really many options for you because you need to kill these walls. But how do you kill the walls? And the thing is, Salami's smart. He's not going to make a gate on here because if you make a gate, then that is a weak point. If you make a a, a, a weak point... Is Core going... Is Core going to get landmarks sniped here? Salami knows about all of the landmarks, right? Oh, did he kill the guild hall? Oh, he killed the guild hall. Oh, he's going to kill Core. Oh, he's actually going to kill Core. Salami, literally with a wonder in his base, is going to kill Core. He's going to do it. The College of Artillery is there. The School of Cavalry is already down. Where are the units from Core? Okay, okay, all right. Core's looking to try and defend. Not bad, but at the same time, I mean, we got a huge mass from Salami. So Salami really looking to try and take the brunt of this attack uh, and, and dismiss... I wouldn't necessarily say dismiss it, but neutralize it before it even comes in. If he can kill Core before Core can attack him... Then it's only two players that he's up against. And that's what we see up to the north. If there's a person that's spearheading this attack, it's core because Beastie Cutie, he's still stuck kind of fighting Nevix. We can see these guys trying to make their way through towards their opponent's base, but the map is so big. And now core at the same time, he's trying his best to hold on towards this position, but there's no villagers repairing the College of Artillery. At the same time, the town center is slowly going down. You can see just being attacked by a few Royal Knights, but now or a few Knights rather, but it looks like the knight's going to be able to take it down. And I think Core might be tapping out here. He's got 18,000 score. And there's no way he's possibly going to be able to hold on. And there he goes, ladies and gentlemen. Now it is down to three. 
Core has been tapped out. He could have looked to repair this landmark. In fact, he was looking to repair this landmark. I'm curious exactly how far along it had gotten, but that is for another day. And Salami immediately deletes his army. He says, I don't need this army anymore. It has achieved its goal. I am simply going to rebuild it back in my base. And that's exactly what he does. Horseman out the wazoo, baby. Horseman out the wazoo. Salami doing a great job there. Oh, oh, bit of a lag spike right there. I don't think we'll head into... Into, um, into Fog of War anymore. Bombard's now coming out. Now, what what is the issue here uh, for Beastie Cutie? Beastie Cutie's got a lot of siege, but is he going to be able to protect it? Especially when you've got 78 horsemen running in. That's not even an understatement. 78 horsemen. Like, look at the units that are coming out right now for Salami. It's pretty massive. Uh, so it's Salami versus Beastie Cutie and up towards the north, Nevix. He's found a little bit of a gap. Nevix's going to be able to take down the first wall. And then the second wall make his way through. But keep in mind, he needs to make sure that Beastie is pushing at the same time as him. They need to be attacking at the same time because they are going up against a wonder. Um... Uh the, the name has changed halfway through. Salami has changed his name. And apparently the game actively monitors uh, the usernames of players. Uh, I didn't realize that. That is uh, that is interesting. Uh, so Salami has changed his name to Negi Tifolos Langos again. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what that means. I don't, I don't actually speak that language. Uh, but uh, there you go. Salami's name has, has changed and it updates in the middle of the, the replay. Uh, there you go. Today I learned. But now it looks like Beastie going to be breaking through. Where are Salami's military units at? There they are. We'll take a look from Salami's perspective. Actually, that is Salami's perspective right there. Uh, so he's sitting at 138 military. He's got plenty of resources in here to keep funneling in... Uh, to keep funneling in horsemen. Now, keep in mind, all he needs to do is take out the bombards. That's what he wants. He doesn't care about the infantry. Why doesn't he care about the infantry? What's the worst you're going to do, mate? What's the what's the worst you're going to do with that infantry? You're going to have to make a battering ram. It's going to take you ages to build it. Even if you make a siege uh, a, a siege tower, there's no gates on the inside, mate. You're not going to be able to do anything. And we can see he's actually training Vils inside here. Probably going to be able to repair. Uh, but the, the main thing is you've got to be careful of a flank. And you can see scenari sen scenario. We can see that uh, Salami is, is lying in wait, ready to flank. We'll check in with the Wonder Tracker and see how long it's got. It's got seven minutes to go. It might seem like a long time, but I assure you that is a very short time when it comes to a push like this going up against a player like salami he is the kind of guy he's just very very methodical in scenarios like this he's going to make sure that he makes no mistakes never commits his army unless he has to and he's going to be coming in for the siege remember it is all about the siege he doesn't really care but keep in mind behind this if these two armies go down then that's it salami is going to be reinforcing non-stop take a look at the production salami's got he's got 51 production buildings rallying to the front right now he has got units in queue for days and even if he loses his first army. He's going to be able to use the second army and now we begin to see the horsemen charging down upon the trebuchets. At the same time, we hear the bombards firing off from the top of the hill. Villagers moving out, but now we tune in over with this position. Salami needs to delete these houses so he can get through. He's having a little bit of a tough time breaking through on this eastern flank. But all of the units going to get clumped up here in this position. Hand Cannon is going to do a great job. And Trebuchet is managing to hold on. At the same time, more horsemen coming through. Bombard's beginning to move forward. He's looking to try and take down that Barksha and Berry combination. Ba Barksha firing off down towards those Bombards. And Salami looking like he might actually be in a bit of trouble here. The Trebuchet is moving forward, but not so fast. Village is going to be coming out together with Elite Spearmen. Looking to try and take it down. Keep in mind, if you lose the siege in this situation, you are absolutely dumbstruck. And now all of a sudden... It's still, it is such a while to go. Look how much distance he's going to have to cover with that siege. And you can see that even though all of the units do, he, it'll do go down here for Salami. He's going to have reinforcements on the way. He's sitting at 130 military pop or 130 population at the moment. 10 knights going to be coming out. He is holding on. They are looking to focus it down. A lot of bombards now beginning to focus down the Barkshire Palace. That's going to be one of the ways to take it out. But keep in mind, even if you take out all of the landmarks here, there is still one landmark that sits safely behind the, the stone walls. It is the main town center of Salami. And this is why corners are so damn powerful in free-for-all. Because you can wall them up and you can protect them the exact same way you would protect your wonder. And now we've got Salami with a victory condition, managing to keep himself alive as well. In this point, At this point in time, it looks like Salami is going to be continuing to struggle. Two trebuchets beginning to move up. Uh, how much? What, what kind of time do we have? We've got five minutes to go on this... Not too long at all. Five minutes to go before those bells start dinging. And more Bombards moving up. 
We can see that there's also three sacred sites that have been taken behind this. So Beastie Cutie is also on the sacred track. And we've got no idea how long that is because it doesn't tell you. Uh, but the Wonder Track is going to tell us how long we've got. We've got five minutes. And now it looks like Salami heading up towards the north. He's going to be going for the trebuchets, I suspect. Indeed, he does. He gets his torches out. He heads for the first trebuchet. Second trebuchet. We're going to be under attack. The first one does go down. Bombards continue moving forward for Beastie Cutie. If he shuts down this, this attack up towards the north, he's going to be okay. But now at the same time, he's got 10,000 food. But he's got no other resources in the bank. And now begins focus down on the rest of the units at the same time. Lance Connect's going to be in here looking to defend a lot of a AoE, a lot of Age of Empires, a lot of AoE coming out for them as well. We see Men at Arms in queue for Salami. He's got 17 of these bad boys right now, and he's, he's struggling to move through. BCQD trying his best to get through. All of the units coming out right now for Salami. Look at, the, look at the surround he's got, and at the same time, we've got a whole bunch of infantry that's moving back towards the back. I'm not sure if they realize the potential threat that's there, but all of the bombards have been taken down. We've got only got a, a handful of bombards that actually remain. A beautiful surround coming in from Salami and keep in mind if you kill the siege you kill the push and now Nevik's going to be heading back away from his base and Beastie Cutie is going to be scouting out the stone walls around the edge of the map and you can see the villagers on the backside ready to heal ready to repair and now the, the villagers on the farm is going to get completely cleaned up. Bombards trying their way to make it through the labyrinth of barracks are all going to be going down. Salami manages to hold on at this point in time. All the bombards going to be going down. Every single one of them and finally Beastie's push fizzles out. Keep in mind, behind this is taking the sacred sites, but the question is is it even going to matter? Because now Salami looks to be going into scouts as well. That's the only thing he can spend his, got his uh, food on. He's got 30 scouts queued up at the moment. They're going to be coming out doing 2 damage a pop. Actually, they do 5 damage a pop. That's not too bad. They're pretty, they're pretty good in the late game now, because they got that double attack speed. They're tanking it up like a madman, but at the same time, Salami keeps his wonder alive, keeps his landmark alive. All of the other wonders and landmarks have died. So he's lost the King's Palace. The King's Palace has gone down. You can see it right here. He's lost his Council Hall. Council Hall was destroyed. He lost his Barkshire Palace. It is literally the one wonder, the one landmark that remain. And Salami repels the push. How many minutes do we have to remain? Let's take a look. We've got three minutes to go for Salami to be victorious in this scenario. And now the scouts begin to flood the field. It's the only thing he's got left. You hear that? Three, minute, three minutes until wonder victory. Salami manages to hold on. Is there any possible way that we could have a comeback here? At the same time, Beastie is now looking to bring in the Bombards. Look at the size of these stone walls just coming through. And Salami re-walls. He says, ha, you thought you could send in reinforcements? Not today. He sends in more. He, he, I can't believe it. Salami's just got such a big brain for these kind of things. Like, he's focusing on 73 different things. And at the same time, he's like, oh, let me wall the gap. He manages to wall the gap. He stops any subsequent push from coming through. All of the units in his, in his base have been taken out. There's like, a, there's a single man at arms that's sieging down a lumber camp. That is it. Everything else for Salami now is just looking absolutely beautiful. He's got 29 villagers. 153 military. You got one villager that's just randomly out on a deer patch over here. And he, hold, he holds on. I think we've got about two minutes to go before the wonder victory happens. But at this point in time, you can see that now Beastie once again going to be struggling to break through that wall. There it is. Two minutes to go. Bombard's going to be trying their best to get through. Indeed, they do eventually make their way, but they have got such a long walk up towards the walls. And then finally, the landmark and the wonder of Salami. But now Salami looking to wall up once again. Salami, you can't be doing it again. You're an absolute madman now walling up once again. Jeez Louise, this guy means absolute business when it comes to walling. Do not mess with these guys' walls. He is just walling for days. He is stopping this push before it can even come. Keep in mind, we've got less than two minutes to go. More bombards coming up. Battering rams finally being made for Nevix here. Ideally, you would have loved to have seen him made up over in this corner. Maybe a different result could have happened for him. But at this point in time, we've got Beastie Cutie and Nevix. And I tell you what, right now, Beastie is very happy happy that he didn't kill Nevix. Look, look at the production coming out from Nevix. And this is what I'm talking about. Look at the marathon that these guys are going to run to get to the fight. And that's exactly why you've got the defender's advantage in scenarios like this, or just, in fact, in any case. Finally, that wall is going to be coming down now. One minute until victory. The first of the many walls has gone down, but he's still got quite a way away to go. You can see the villagers standing ready by to, to repair that town center. Lance Connects on the front going to be looking to engage. They've got to be careful of these bombards at the same time. Where is Salami? Where is he? He's snooping, swooping around with the scouts. The caped saviors for Salami looking to try and take down the siege before it can even get into battle. At the same time, a little bit of a... Oh, he's got him in the choke point. It's terrible damage. Salami looking to try and take control of the game in the battery. Ram's going to be coming through. We've got less than a minute to go. 29 seconds, and I think Salami is going to be able to clean this up. Salami with a beautiful engage. Perfect timing. Completely ruffle stumps all of the bombards in the choke point. 
All of the scouts managing to just take out all of the siege. And now finally Beastie makes his way through. You can see his intent on claiming what is his. But at the same time, you can see his right clicking the town center. But he can't make his way through. And now Beastie Cutie once again going to get stuck in the choke point. I'm stuck, Step Bro. I'm stuck. And it looks like we're going to have a victor. Salami is the victor. What an absolute game. Fellas, if you have enjoyed watching this game, then... I, ho I hope you download Age of Empires 4. I hope you come check it out. It's an absolutely beautiful game. We got so much going for ourselves right now. Come join us. Have some fun. I'll catch you guys in the next one.